Hello, my name is James Bailey. I'm a faculty member at Texas A&M University, and today I want to talk to you about how to use gradient descent with arbitrary fixed step size to obtain finite regret, that is 1 over t time average regret, um, by just having agents take turns. Moreover, we're going to show in the setting of zero-sum games that the strategies will actually cycle around the Nash equilibrium. Now, this work's done in collaboration with Gauthier Goodell and Yorgos Pelioris. And in this talk, I specifically want to talk about unconstrained games where agent one um, selects a strategy, some dimensional strategy, and plays it against some sort of linear combination of the opponent's strategy. And in the online optimization setting, we'll play this game repeatedly where agents update strategies uh, in each iteration. Now, what we're gonna show in this talk is um, sort of a twist on standard optimization. It was we're actually have agents take turns. And we're gonna show that when we do this, if one of the agents uses gradient descent uh, with an arbitrary fixed step size, that agent is actually going to obtain 1 over t time average uh, regret, which is, you know, much stronger guarantees than standard implementations of gradient descent. Moreover, we'll also study this system from a dynamics perspective, uh, specifically in zero-sum games. And we'll show that if both those agents use gradient descent, the strategies will actually cycle around the Nash equilibrium. And we're going to establish these results by um, sort of relating the problem to physics. And this relationship will help us sort of extend the results to, to a variety of other settings, which we'll talk about throughout this, uh, uh, this talk. Now, for most of this talk, I'm going to be focusing on, on zero-sum games, simple zero-sum games, where we have a maximization and minimization term for that uh, simple strategy, where x1 and x2, or excuse me, the two agents, x and y, are, are selecting uh, arbitrary dimensional strategies. And in this repeated setting, we're going to use online optimization, some sort of update algorithm to, to change these strategies over time. And the standard approach is gradient descent with simultaneous updates, where you update according to your payoffs in the previous iteration. Now, this algorithm has some nice properties. Regret grows at a rate of root t. Um, while growing regret sounds bad, uh, it's considered nice if it's sublinear because the time average regret will uh, decay at rate 1 over root t, implying you know, time average convergence to that optimal value. More, um, regrettably, however, this you know, proof relies on decaying step sizes uh, at rate 1 over root t. Um, which is prohibitively slow in a lot of settings where we use online optimization. Moreover, from a dynamics perspective, gradient descent with simultaneous updates I showed a couple years ago does exactly the opposite of what you want. It actually diverges from the Nash equilibrium. And we're actually going to overcome both of these negative properties by changing the implementation in gradient descent slightly. Instead of updating strategies simultaneously, agents are going to take turns. Agent 1 will update XT first, and then after seeing Agent 1's update, Agent 2, yt, will update her strategy accordingly. And this will, is what's going to lead to that 1 over t time average regret with arbitrary step size and cycles in the setting of zero-sum games. And specifically, the way we're going to establish this is we're going to try to understand this as a dynamical system. Specifically, we're going to try to understand it as a physical system, which might be a little bit surprising because, you know, we think of physical systems as smooth and continuous, and algorithms aren't. They're discrete, they bounce around, they're fundamentally not smooth and continuous. So um, I, don't know, I think it'll be a little bit interesting we establish that sort of connection a little bit later on. But I think the easiest way to sort of start thinking by online optimization as a physical system is just by thinking of online optimization in continuous time. Now, our paper doesn't study this um, setting. We, we work solely in discrete time. But I think it's important to mention this as a motivating case. Because when you apply gradient descent in continuous time, you get 1 over t time average convergence. Um, my, one of my co-authors, uh, Yorgo, showed this uh, a couple years ago. Um, moreover, I showed last year that in this setting, uh, this forms something called a Hamiltonian system. Now, what those are aren't too important, but they are the fundamental building blocks of physics. They explain things like the Earth revolving around the sun and springs bouncing back and forth. And in this connection, in this, this uh, uh, physical system of online optimization, the energy just corresponds to the distance Nash equilibrium, and that energy is constant. Uh, and that will be nice in sort of coming to play when we talk about the discrete algorithm a little bit later on. Now, this connection to physics does um, um, explain something I, I, I showed uh, last year, two years ago, excuse me, um, with respect to simultaneous updates. They actually diverge from the system, and this is simply because simultaneously updates correspond to that first order approximation, and as a result, standard methods of gradient descent actually diverge from Nash equilibrium. But I mentioned that for, for a contrast, you know, like this continuous time orbits behave really well. We like to approximate them well because they have good behavior. But simultaneous updates don't do that. So as a, as a physicist, you know, as a mathematical dynamics person, we need to ask ourselves, how do we get better approximations? 
And while ultimately in this paper, I will tell you, you know, the answer is alternating updates. The reason those work is because they are the result of a better approximation of a continuous time system. Specifically, um, Verlet integration is a, a better approximation for Hamiltonian systems, and it corresponds to updating position and momentum um, in an alternating setting. And in that, that um, analog to physics I established, agent one represents position, agent two represents momentum, and hence we get the alternating um, gradient descent update. And this system gets a much better approximation of that continuous time system, again, leading to those nice properties we established a little bit um, earlier. So first off, I want to start with regret. Now, most of you will know what the sort of standard notion of regret is in um, simultaneous updates. We do have to tweak it a little bit for, for alternating play, specifically because when we take turns updating, I'm actually going to play against your strategy twice. I'll play against it first when you update it, when it's not my turn. And then I'll play it against the second time when I'm updating my strategy and you're, you're not updating yours. As a result, our, our notion of regret looks slightly differently, but it's still that fundamental notion of regret where on the, the right-hand side, we get the utility obtained from the updates when I play against your strategy twice, both once when you update and once when I update. And when we're looking at the utility of fixed strategy, again, you know, we get that too because we play against that strategy that strategy twice. Now, going back to the physics here, the, the connection to physics, this utility from the updates actually connects into this, this physical system really well. It actually describes the change in the distance Nash equilibrium. We formally show that that total utility you gain when you play against your opponent's strategy twice is exactly how much your distance from Nash equilibrium changes. Um, and that's for, for general games. And similarly, there's a, another result for agent two. And in the setting of zero-sum games, when you put both those together, you get a really surprising property. When both agents use alternating gradient descent in zero-sum games, then we get a conservation of a perturbed energy. That's to say, you know, despite having these discrete updates, the strategies actually belong to this smooth, continuous function. And moreover, this smooth, continuous function looks familiar. That first part is the energy of the continuous time system. And since this very light integration, since it's alternating play approximates that, we mostly preserve that energy of the original system. We just have a slight perturbation due to those, those payoffs. And this notion of energy allows us to say something about regret. This utility exactly describes the, the change in distance. As a result, we can say something about the regret. Specifically, we can say that agent one uses this algorithm. Then she's going to obtain one over t time average regret using gradient descent. And I do want to emphasize this theorem statement. It makes no stipulation on the learning rate. I mean, it has to be a fixed learning rate. If you use a decaying learning rate, the, the time average regrets actually be worse than one over t. Um, it makes no dependence on the time horizon t. It allows for any update rule for agent two. This means you could be playing as an adversarial, omniscient, psychic agent that you know is out to get you and wants your regret to be as large as possible. But you know, as long as you use gradient descent, your time average regret will be one over t. Moreover, this proof makes no uh, statements on how your opponent updates and makes no opponent, uh, statements on the opponent's payoff matrix. And therefore, the result extends to those, those general linear games, things like coordination games as, as well. And while this result holds for you know, general dimension, I do think it is nice to sort of look at in two dimensions, um, just you know, to confirm that we haven't lost our minds. Um, but specifically in this setting, I'm, I'm looking at a game, a zero-sum game, where both agents use gradient descent. And we see that the total regret actually oscillates. Technically, it doesn't grow. It just oscillates. As a result, we have 1 over t time average regret in, in a fairly regular way. And before I move on to that regularity, the, sort of the dynamics of the system, I want to go back to that statement of the theorem one time real quick. And specifically, observe that this regret, in fact, the utility for that matter, are defined solely by the first iterate and the last iterate, which is, which is fasting. You could take any path to get to you know, your final strategy. But I can determine your total utility based off only your final strategy. Your path doesn't actually matter. And, and somehow this like regularity, this, this, this behavior, suggests some sort of something going on in the actual dynamics of the system, where the, the end strategy ends up being the only thing that matters. So the rest of the talk, I want to talk about the actual dynamics of online optimization. And specifically, I want to look at it in the setting of, of zero-sum zero -sum games. And specifically, we show in this paper, you know, the first time, uh, for the first time, you know, that the alternating gradient descent is point care recurrent. From formally, it, it cycles. Uh, well, informally, it cycles. Formally, you know, you return arbitrarily close to your initial condition infinitely sort of often, which is an incredible stability condition. It implies, you know, you watch the system for a little bit 
And as soon as you cycle, you fundamentally understand how the system's going to evolve over time. And the standard way to show point carry occurrence is actually establishing two other nice stability properties. Specifically, the trajectories are bounded, um, uh, which we'll go to next, and that volume is preserved in the system, which we'll formally define in a second. So let's get started off with the branded trajectories. As we said before, despite these sort of discrete updates, we have this smooth continuous function that looks like distance, that describes all the trajectories for all time. Now, um, the fact it looks like distance suggests the trajectories are bounded. However, to formally show they are bounded, you actually have to have the learning rates be sufficiently small. As a result, the level sets of that energy function are going to be compact. And in fact, um, you, you get this sort of bounded orbit very close to initial energy. As eta1 and eta2 become small, the, um, the, the trajectories will be bounded arbitrarily close to that initial energy function. And again, while this holds in general dimension, I think it's a little bit easier to see what's going on in two dimensions um, with a statement of this theorem. Um, with this dashed line, you have the, um, the initial distance from Nash equilibrium, and the lower and upper bounds are represented by the um, solid ellipses. And as eta1 and a2 grow smaller and smaller, those upper and lower bounds will actually converge to that initial distance. And for sufficiently small learning rates, you almost get a perfect approximation of the energy of that continuous time system, of that distance Nash equilibrium. Now, I do want to make a quick remark on bounded orbits. Um, the bounded orbits part of this paper has been shown um, last year. I mean, our pair paper still sort of shows this bounded regret for the first time in point care recurrence. But one of my co-authors, uh, Gautier, actually showed bounded uh, orbits last year in a paper that covered a, a variety of other things. Um, and after talking to Gautier, I do want to note that our, our approach actually does offer sort of three improvements over, over that uh, previous proof. Um, specifically, we provided that exact smooth continuous invariant function that captures all these discrete updates. Um, moreover, our bounds are explicitly dependent on the parameters of the problem um, and fundamentally relates this dynamics to the actual problem that's going on, the game going on underneath it. And I think what's most important to my approach is that it relies less on Euclidean geometry. And therefore, I expect it's going to be generalizable to a bunch of other algorithms and a bunch of the geometries, which we'll talk about um, on very shortly. But for now, let's you know, go back to point care recurrence and establish that second stability condition, namely volume preservation. And specifically, volume preservation sort of means what it sounds like if you take you know, like a, a circle with area one and update every single point in that circle, then the area of those updates is still going to be one. And the reason volume preservation is important, or rather the reason not having volume expansion is important, is because volume expansion actually implies chaos. It allows for two initial conditions um, that are arbitrarily close to become arbitrarily far apart over time, which we'll see in a second. Um, interesting, this result holds actually for general games, not just zero sum, and makes no stipulation on the learning rates. But I, I want to sort of pictorially again see what happens in two dimensions. On the, um, on the left, we see alternating play. We're updating every single strategy in this cat. And while the shape of the cat is changing slightly over time, the total area doesn't change, which is nice um, and stable. Alternatively, when you look at simultaneous play, the standard update um, that people typically use, the volume of the cat actually expands. And you notice that left ear and the right chin, they grow further and further apart over time, establishing some sort of um, chaos. So alternating play gets this nice stability condition um, over its you know, simultaneous counterpart. And when you put this together with other stability condition, bounded orbits along with volume preservation, you actually get these exact cycles, which as I said, sort of makes this behavior um, predictable over time, which is sort of very nice. But altogether, when you look at both sort of these, these regret guarantees that we established earlier on, as well as this dynamical system, we've established you know, that gradient descent, when you use alternating play, it actually establishes several benefits over the standard implementation of simultaneous regret uh, play. Specifically, we get those much stronger regret guarantees. And we actually do it with fixed learning rates so that we can stay aggressive to that new information. And you know, interesting enough, you know, of course, doesn't lie on that time horizon and works regardless of the opponent's rule, which um, a lot of 1 over t algorithms require both updates, uh, agents to update in certain ways. Second, from a dynamics perspective, it's also fundamentally better than alternating play. We get that nice, cyclic, predictable behavior. In addition, we, we have these bounded orbits on these smooth, continuous functions um, that are sort of stable over time. In the same way with volume, we, we avoid sort of chaos. Um, with, um, so as a result, you know, I, I encourage all of you to consider using alternating play in a lot of settings. Uh, but sort of final remarks, I want to talk a little bit about FTR for all the regularized leader, which gradient descent is a special case of. Um, the results I talked about with relating this to a physical system, it actually extends for any all for all the regularized leader, things like multiplicative weights, and over any convex strategy space. And therefore, the approaches and techniques I introduced in this paper, 
I expect to extend in that setting as well. Unfortunately, you know, that invariant function um, fundamentally relies on the regularizer you're using. Not only that, but the convex conjugate the regularizer you're using, which heavily relies on that strategy space. So while I believe the results will extend, uh, finding those invariant functions is, is going to be non-trivial. Non um, so that sort of wraps up my, my talk. Um, I hope that you join me in my session a little bit later on so we can talk about it more, um, ask any questions. Of course, you can always email me if you have any questions at all. Um, I hope everyone's staying healthy, um, and I hope to see you guys in person next year. Thanks a lot.